Hey, everybody, it's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, and joining me today, we are so happy to have Pastor Will Whedon. Pastor Whedon is uh, an author, a pastor. Uh, he is also uh, the host of a podcast called The Word of the Lord Endures Forever, which you should definitely check out. And he's on the TikTok now, too, if you're bored. So, uh, Pastor Whedon, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you, Pastor Goodman, for the opportunity. It's fantastic to have you here. Um, it's it's uh, it's just absolutely a privilege. Uh, I, I invited you on because uh, you host a podcast called The Word of the Lord Endures Forever. Uh, and it's one of those things where actually, well, also, I'm, I'm, I put stuff on the internet about the Bible all day long. Uh, what we get to do right now is we get to talk about sacred scripture all the time. And, and one of the great things about the internet is that absolutely everyone can say anything they want to. So you know you're getting the best possible information. There's no shortage of stuff about the Bible online. Why do we actually read it? That is really a very great question. I mean, it's one thing to read about something else or listen to something about something else. It's a totally different experience to open up the word of God and realize that God himself is speaking to you through his holy inspired word. It, it's a different experience and it's well worthwhile. Um, one of the things that has uh, sort of fascinated me over the years is the different ways we learn from scripture. So I mean, like, yeah, you go to Bible class and you've got your Bible open and you're following along, you know, and, and you do learn and, and, and you, it's a great way to study God's word. You sit in the, the congregation in the divine service and you listen to the pastor proclaim the scriptures to you and you learn. And that's a way of dwelling in the word of God too. Um, because of things like the internet, it's become like uber easy to actually go to Audible and download yourself the entire Bible, including the Apocrypha. I mean, you should become familiar with the whole thing. And honestly, I like that too. That's the way to sort of see if you need to, if you need to see the forest instead of the trees, that's the way to do it. And you see totally different things when somebody's reading to you swaths of scripture. Um, I'll tell you my own normal practice is that when I'm doing my morning exercise, uh, I usually have the uh, Audible Bible in. I, I like the one. I think Christopher Glenn's the name of the guy who reads it. He's got a lovely uh, Irish accent. Um, and, and I listen to it in the King James because that's what I grew up with. I'm old and I like that. Um, <laughs> so we, 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 I, I listen to it like, you know, just again and again. And the more I listen to it, the more I'm, I see different things in, in that big sweeping way of listening to the scriptures. But all of that is very different from what happens in the morning when, you know, my wife and I, we, we, first thing we usually sit down, I have my coffee, she's given up coffee for the month. We'll see how long that lasts. Um, and then, then I, 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 I many times will, uh, well, we pray treasury together and after a treasury of daily prayer, or actually I'll be honest, we pray from the pray now app on our iPhones because Same. it's so much easier. Um, and after we finish that, then we have our own individual Bible reading time. And I really look forward to that. Um, it, it's so different what you see when you're just reading the word of God from what you, you get when you're hearing it or hearing it taught or watching stuff on the Internet. This really is a different experience. And it is absolutely wonderful. I got to tell you, the way I read the, uh, the Bible, I said, I, I, I'm a big devotee of the King James. And I got myself this wonderful King James Bible that has the original, but most, most people don't know. I mean, well, number one, the King James was published with the Apocrypha. So that's in there. And number two, the, uh, the King James had these textual notes that are just glorious that were cut out of most versions for a really long time. So uh, anytime there's any question on how to translate the, the text, they've got a note on it. And they, they have observation there about it. It's very, very helpful. Um, so I used the actual King James Bible reading schedule, which was published in the original King James. I've got that as an exile Excel file. I'd be happy to share that with you. I don't know if you can, can you link files? Yeah, we'll put it in the comments. Absolutely. Excellent. So then people can download it if they want to. It basically gets you through um, the most of the Old Testament once a year and through the New Testament three times a year. And then it also uh, it 
it, it ignores the Psalms because it assumes that you're reading the Psalms once a month. Um, and uh, there's a schedule for that too. I guess I could try to look that up and send you that link as well. That, that's another great thing to do. But anyway, all these are ways that you get to live inside of the scriptures and let the scriptures live inside of you. And I wanted to remind us then of some of the things that Jesus said about this, because just take these words to heart. If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. John 8, 31, 32, Reformation gospel, we hear it every year. This passage tells us that the word of God should be our home. Abide? I mean, think about that. That's like your abode. It's where you live. So Jesus is basic. I mean, if I could paraphrase it, I would say, if you make my word your home, then you will know the truth. So why would you bother reading the Bible on your own every day? Because you want to know the truth. And God has spoken it to you, given it to you. And he's given it to you in this curious and wonderful form that we have in the sacred scriptures. I, we call them a book, but we know it's more like a library. Um, and yet what's really weird is the way everything connects together. And you really can see that when you start looking in detail at individual passages. If you know the whole suite, so you got to do the thing of listening to it and, and studying it all the time at church and at home. And then you go through and you actually read the passage in detail and maybe pay attention to those little things in the margin that give you the cross references, you know, vital. You, you begin to, you can do it at a level that just really uh, changes everything. And I think for, for me, once I started doing that and doing that regularly, those were, the word of God literally became something I couldn't stop reading. It became an obsession. Um, you love it. I mean, it's so curious. And, and it's not like you get everything cleared up by doing this. I mean, just, I'll be honest with you, Pastor. I, I find most commentaries to be less than worthless because they answer all of the questions I don't have. And they never <laughs> deal with the questions that I think the text is actually sticking in my face. So um, I, 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 I'm not not trying to diss people that write commentaries. I'm just observing the fact that even my favorite commentary writers usually skate over the questions that I still have. Um, so I think that one of the coolest things about studying the word in detail is you're going to do the Mary move where like, you remember when she was in the temple with Jesus when he was 12 years old? Okay, a 12 year old kid, you know what they're like, right? And so if, if you ever had any doubt about Jesus being a teenager and a real human being, you just need to read that story and go, <laughs> he just disappears and thinks that it's all cool. You know, so when Mary finds them, remember, she was just so upset. And what did she say? Do you remember her question? I think this is really a vital. She said, Son, why have you treated us so? Your father and I have sought you sorrowing. And when he comes back and throws that, hey, why did you seek me? Didn't you know that I would be in my father's house? Or alternate translation, my father's business. So we're told about that, that Mary didn't understand what he was saying or joseph either but that mary treasured up all these things in her heart when she didn't get it something of the word that her son said to her she didn't let it go she took it and kept it and kept pondering it and thinking about it and that's what our that's our job as christians with the sacred scriptures we get to read them and study them and let them dwell inside of us and and all the questions that we have, we just keep coming back and reading. And there, there's still plenty of passages. Um, don't ask me about Nephilim. I have, I guess, I have to get that figured out before I cover that in Genesis. But you know, I mean, there, there's so many things in the Bible that you read, and you're like, oh, what am I supposed to do with that? Um, it's glorious. Don't let it go. Hold tight to it, and just keep thinking about it. And as you continue to study it in detail, to read, to read the word of God, out, you know, read it out loud to yourself if you can. I, I feel like a hypocrite saying that because my wife is sitting in the room reading hers and I'm in the room reading mine. And, and it wouldn't do real well for us to read it out loud because we would be 
ticking the other off because we would not be able to concentrate on what we're reading. Um, so, but, but, but it really is amazing when you just take the time to read it. When you read it out loud, you slow down. You have to. Yeah. Um, and, and just slowing down and reading the word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet against the Philistines. I mean, it's gonna, it just slows you. And that makes you pay more attention to what's right there in front of you. Um, can I share a few more passages that I think are key? Absolutely. Okay. So Jesus also said, whoever loves me will keep my word. And my father will love him and will come to him and we'll make our home with him. So Jesus talked about making our home in the word. He says, if you do that and you love me and you keep my word, then I'm going to make my home with my father inside of you. So that's a really cool thing. I mean, you want God to dwell inside of you? Well, as Lutherans, we don't have this sort of mystical woo 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 experience of that. Our experience of it comes from the scriptures. As the words dwell in us, the words inspired by the Holy Spirit, which the Father gave to Jesus to give to us, this is how the Holy Trinity has communion in and with us. And we realize this is the most precious gift that we could ever, ever have received. Absolutely everything for our salvation hangs on this word. And the more we live in it, the more he lives in us, and the more we realize this is exactly what we were made for, to have communion with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that communion is simply mediated to us through the word of God. I'm not saying and you should take your Bible and run off, run off by yourself and be alone. I'm not, not dissing the importance of the divine service or the importance of actually things like my, my, my study every day. Um, what, what, whatever your resource is that you're, this, this podcast, you know, you're, you're, you're providing a way for them to dwell in the word of God here. So all of these things are important, but I don't think any of them can substitute for the discipline of daily spending time in the word of God, reading a little bit. And you know what happens? I mean, I have a schedule I follow. My wife doesn't have a schedule. She follows, uh, I mean, she reads the Psalms every through every month, but then she just picks a book of the Bible and she just works her way all the way through it. She just recently finished doing all of the Apocrypha too, because um, she has the same nifty Bible that I do. Um, and, and, and the more that we actually dwell inside of that word, the more we'll realize the fellowship that God is always offering it through, uh, through that word to us with himself and the spirit. Jesus said in John 6, the words, that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. I remember Dr. Nagel said that spirit should be capital S. Those words that I speak to you, they are Holy Spirit words and they carry the life of the Trinity into you. Um, Jesus also said, if anyone hears my words and doesn't keep them, I'm not gonna judge him because I didn't come into the world to, to judge the world, but to save it. The one who rejects me and does not receive my words, he has a judge. And it's going to be the words that I have spoken that will judge him on the last day, um, John 12. So, I mean, he's inviting with those kind of scary words. He's writing us, hey, don't take lightly the words that I've given you. These are the words that on the last day are going to actually be what judges you. So um, Jesus also says in uh, John 17, I love this. He said, I've given them the words that you gave me. Talking to his father. They've received them. They've welcomed them. They've taken them into themselves and they know that in truth, I came from you and they believed that you sent me. And of course, you know, the name of my podcast is the word of the Lord endures forever. So I, I can't help but love the passage in Matthew 24, verse 35, where Jesus said, look, heaven and earth are going to pass away. Boom, gone, their history. But my words are never going to pass away. So when we take the words of Jesus, and I believe, by the way, that this entire thing is the words of Jesus, because he's the one about whom the Holy Spirit inspired the writers to write from the beginning. It's all his book, all his story. When we let those words dwell inside of us, we're dwelling, we're letting dwell inside of us something that will never go away. It will never, it gives us a life that never ends. And, uh, and frankly, everything else in this world goes, but that word's never going to go. It's never going to pass away. And that means it's the only you know, sort of eternal thing that you're actually coming into daily contact. I mean, think about it. Every day you're touching the, the words that will not go away. Your word is eternal in the heavens, Psalm 119. So with that kind of a beautiful picture of the word of God, 
I would say, why would you not want to read it every day? One more thing. You need to memorize it too. And you can't do that without actually doing the kind of daily reading and, and working on verses, you know, one by one. Why do you need them? Because um, this is part of the spiritual battle that we're all going to be in, where there is nothing that drives Satan and his temptation away faster than if you take a scripture and stuff it back in his face when he comes at you. So like he can come at you and say, hey, how can you claim to be a child of God? Look at the awful things you've done. Look at your sins. You know you're a hypocrite. What can you come back at him with that? Well, what about picking up First John 2, 2? He is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. He is the propitiation. Or another one of my favorites, think about Colossians chapter 2, 13. And you who were dead in your trespasses and sins, he has made alive together with his son, Jesus Christ. God made you alive with him and has forgiven you all your trespasses, all your trespasses. You can take that word and stop it down Satan's throat and say, hey, have you paid attention to what Jesus says through his apostle here? All my sins are gone. And with that kind of a specific passage, you can drive him back. And it's one of the things that I think is uh, most helpful for the daily Bible reading in depth to actually take a verse or two and say, ooh, that's one I need to hold on to for those times. You'll know when you come across them because, uh, you know, we all face different temptations, but the Bible has a scripture passage for every single one of them that can be used that way. And let me just throw in my last plea. It's just fascinating. I mean, the more you read the book, the more you love it. The more you want to read it, the more you want to study it. You want to see this sort of come to life. Uh, check out Jordan Peterson's comments on the Bible. This guy, you know, he's a philosopher. And when he starts out, he starts out kind of like a quasi-atheist that kind of respects the book. And the more he reads, the more the book does its job. He even begins to get what Jesus Christ was all about. It his the, the, the podcast where he explains it to Joe Rogan is just golden. Uh, mm. um, and I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble for mentioning Joe Rogan. I mean, they're, they're bad language, but not from Jordan Peterson. OK, um, but but it's worthwhile, I think, to actually hear um, somebody that's appreciated reading the scriptures and getting them and who wants to understand them more and more. His depth of understanding on them has grown enormously through the years. And so yeah, every time you get a chance to, it's worthwhile to, I'm not saying you should believe everything the guy says about the Bible. <laughs> I'm saying it's great to see a man wrestling with what the word of God says and watch the word of God at work doing its faith giving job. That's a great thing. Absolutely. So the reason that we, we have all of this, this plethora of information, we have the word of the Lord, we have higher things. It's so that we can actually talk about the things that are promised in the book that we read. It, it, it's, it's more, it's not either or because God's not schizophrenic. He's not saying pick one or pick the other. They're not set against each other. He says, this is yeah. my word. It gives you life. Abide in it. I love it. Pastor yeah, Weedon, thank you it. so much. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, what a joy. Thank you so much. Again, uh, check out Pastor Wheaton. He's on the TikTok. Uh, the Word of the Lord Endures Forever by Lutheran Public Radio is his podcast, and you should absolutely give it a subscription. Thanks so much. Thanks so much.